Hi, I'm Andy Footer. You may know me from interviewing such celebrities as Colin Baker, Bonnie Langford, Camille Kajuri, and the lovely Danny Horn from Doctor Who and A Christmas Carol. Oh yes, Danny Horn. Right now, I'm here to give you five reasons why Revenge of the Cybermen is the greatest cyber adventure ever. At number five, it's the location. Wookie Hole Caves are amazing. I cannot stress this enough. If you've never been, visit. Admittedly, the majesty of the location isn't quite matched by the studio recreation, but that's not the fault of Wookie Hole Caves. They look glorious. Wet, dark, dangerous, and real. By the way, this is Kieran. He's ginger, Australian, and very lovely. Now, the caves themselves began forming around 345 million years ago, so it's pretty much going to look just as it did on screen whenever you choose to visit. At number four, it's the music. It's fair to say that Revenge boasts a pretty atypical soundtrack. The incidental music was composed by Kerry Blyton and enhanced by the BBC Radiophonic Workshop. Blyton's sound is more acoustic and whimsical, as demonstrated by his previous Doctor Who score for Death to the Daleks. It may not surprise you to learn that I also love that much derided gem. See also Doctor Who and the Silurians. What can I say? I'm a sucker for a crumb horn. Blyton was asked to provide a change from the usual Dudley Simpson sound due to the ubiquitousness of the usual composer's work. Measured against this requirement, to provide something different, Blyton's score is a resounding success. Harry Sullivan is an imbecile! At number two, The Doctor. He's amazing. He's on fire. So much dry wit, so much anger. All of season 12 feels like it's at least Tom Baker's third season in the role. So successful and so confident is his performance. Don't believe me? Buy yourself a copy of Doctor Who, the collection, season 12, on shiny Blu-ray disc. They're really easy to find on eBay. Watch it and you'll see that from episode one of Robot, Tom's very first, he is absolutely in charge. And whether you enjoy revenge or not, He's equally in charge here. The Doctor is brilliant in this and brings every drop of angry moral opprobrium to this pathetic bunch of soldiers skulking about the galaxy in an ancient spaceship. In fact, just as much fury about the threat of the Cybermen as his Do I Have the Right conundrum only episodes earlier. The truth is, the Doctor is just as brilliant here as he is in Genesis of the Daleks. You just don't want to admit it. And at number one, it's the Cyber Leader. Much ado has been made about rather trained Royal Shakespeare Company alumni Christopher Robbie in the role of the Cyber Leader. Having appeared in Doctor Who some years before, alongside TV's Wendy Padbury in The Mind Robber, Robbie brings his rich, mellifluous tones to the Mondasian monster here, making him plummier than a Christmas pudding. And that's a good thing. A lot has been made lately of the fact that Doctor Who thrives on change, and indeed it does. This is a Cyberman the likes of which we have never seen before. Clearly in charge and ready to fragmentise anything that moves, he doesn't muck about. No skulking in sewers awaiting the nod to invade. This is a Cyberman with a clear to-do list and he's going to stick to it. Also, he's not afraid to challenge toxic masculinity by shimmying about with his hands on his hydraulic hips. It's worth bearing in mind that this is the first time we see the role of the cyber leader in the program, and as such, this is the default setting to which other cyber leaders can only aspire. So, there we have my top five reasons why Revenge of the Cybermen is the greatest cyber story Doctor Who has ever told. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, Revenge is also brilliant because massive cyber mats. Thank you for watching. I'm Andy Footer, and this has been a real pleasure. Goodbye, and indeed, adieu.